This is May Omari. I'm a doctor of pharmacy. Um, doctor means uh, the doctor of pharmacy, which is a uh, doctorate degree from Shenandoah University. Um, it's called PharmD. And um, so I'm Dr. May Elamari, pharmacist. And um, today is, I look a little rough. I'm, I apologize for my rough um, lack of makeup. Uh, I don't know what to say other than I'm being financially oppressed and um, I need to talk about it here on YouTube because nobody wants to deal with this. And um, I'm so over the top. I want to, you know, commit suicide. Um, This is what they did to my car while as, um, they were busy praying against me at Big Lots yesterday. So I went to Big Lots. I left the house. I left the apartment at, um, as soon as Jamie and Dave walked in, which was um, around, I was on the treadmill at 1 p.m. I got off the treadmill and, um, you know, when the enemy appears, you leave. And, um, and so I left as they were walking in and um, as my nephew and I talked about when I stayed with him at the time, he was 16 years old and uh, I don't know, I guess long story short, okay, this is me, me and my mom and my dad, you know, brought up Arabic, brought up, you know, to speak, speak the truth. And uh, my dad used to always say, may look me in the eye as a daughter, as a father, to a daughter, he would say, look me in the eye and tell me the truth. And uh, so I would always look him in the eye and tell him the truth. So I'm looking you in the eye and uh, telling you the truth. Um, they keep hating on my car. Um, I've had this Asian car since 2009. And um, I buy Asian because there's many, many, many reasons. Um, and many reasons I don't have to disclose because you don't disclose why you buy your HP. And so this is what they did to my car. So while I was in Big Lots shopping, they're busy praying against me to damage my car. And that's what happened. And so I went to church. I went to, okay, so I, I went to Walmart. Um, I went to Big Lots at 4 p.m. I went to fill up gas at 4.45 p.m. And then I went to Walmart at 6 p.m. to pray, to pray that these fuckers leave me alone. And they didn't. They didn't, obviously. They chased down my car and did this mess to me and they target me every single time I speak up every single time they've been doing this for 35 years against me, 35 years. My first Asian car was a Honda prelude. And, um, the minute I walked it off the lot, the minute that I drove off the lot, I drove down the highway and they prayed against me and a drunk driver came by and swerved and, uh, I did a 180 and, uh, yeah, I hit the miss some, some that wall. This is what they do. And um, anyway, um, this is what they do. When I'm so close to, you know, um, a breakthrough, a financial breakthrough, when I'm so close to a financial breakthrough, this is what they do. And um, uh, to tell you the truth, Celebrate Recovery is a Christian ministry that made me homeless. And they made many women in Michigan homeless um, and divorced and homeless and divorced and crying their fucking eyes out until we wanted to just die. And, um, this is what, uh, pastors in Michigan did to me. And, um, it really hasn't followed me here to California. I'm grateful. Um, and I'm hoping it never follows me to California. Um, they haven't shot me to death yet. And, um, uh, but they are, they are threatening by crushing my car. And, uh, this is the fifth incident on crushing my car, um, and not paying for it. And, um, you know, basically vandalize and run is what they've been doing. And so their sobriety for financial oppression is just disgusting. Um, they are the most um, Christian uh, bastards and bitches of the world. They are not sober financially. They are not sober. And um, I've been walking this financial tightrope um, pretty much my whole fucking life. And, um, you know, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm asking for uh, relief. And, um, and not through the main ways, because when you ask for relief through, uh, what do you call it? Um, 
oh, car insurance companies, you know, they raise your rates and they make you pay for it like five years. They make you pay for it. And um, so before I left Michigan, I met with this um, um, Republican person and uh, met her for coffee at um, Tim Hortons, Diana Farrington. And um, I don't know why I met with her, but um, God just spoke to me and said, you need to meet with this woman before you leave. And uh, anyway, so I did meet with her. I sat down and drank coffee and uh, I sat right next to her and she's like, I'm sitting right across the table from uh, two Democrats and, and she's Republican, obviously. And, you know, I sat by her side at the time. I wasn't, I was apolitical, I guess you can call it. I'm just, I'm a fe- uh, health <laughs> federal, not federal. I'm a healthcare professional who's been um, unemployed chronically um, because of my work. And, um, you know, when you do good work, people have fire you. And, um, so it doesn't mean you stop doing your good work. It just means that you have to walk away from your enemy and go find the work somewhere else, I guess. I mean, I don't know what to say about that, you know, um, just fuck you. Right. I mean, um, you denied me, you've denied me, um, uh, you've denied me employment for, since 2013 full time. And, um, ever since I went to the Hajj in Mecca, Saudi Arabia, and, um, I didn't pray anything crazy. You know, I didn't pray anything crazy. I just prayed, um, you know, free me from this bondage of, uh, of the slavery that they put me in. And, uh, you know, that's what God does, I guess. God with people, I guess. I mean, God, yeah, God. So anyway, um, long story short, celebrate recovery is not a financially sober, um, institution. They are not. And, um, neither are the police. They're corrupt as well. And, um, so definitions of sobriety, you can just tear it up like this. They're not sober. They pray against you every day to be homeless and they will hurt you. If you come against anything they believe in, including their spouse, their marriage, their weight, their weight, like weight, like get on the weight and, and weigh yourself against your weight. I mean, so fucking crazy. It's like, what are we, United States uh, pageant industry? I mean, come on. Who the fuck are you, you know, that you need to crush on my car every fucking day and not pay for it, you know, and make me pay for it. You know, when um, Nancy Pelosi tore up <laughs> the thing behind uh, President Trump's back, you know, in front of national television and the impeachment trial, that's all I got to say. I yield to that. Um, because these Democrats that I, um, look up to and Republicans, um, you know, um, fight righteousness the right way. And, uh, I'm going to learn, I'm, I'm learning how to fight righteousness the right way. And, uh, and I did last night. So you want to crush on my car? That's, I'm going to report you on YouTube and, uh, see what happens. You know, I, I'm still driving the 11 year old car. It's got like five dents and, uh, you know, it's like my body, my body has five sp- my body has more than five scars, apparently. Actually, it has more than five scars. It's got, let's see, one, like two in the front, two in the back. Um, yeah, two in the front, two in the back. And then I think that's it. Yeah, because everything else was like belly button and stuff. So I have four scars. And um, I suppose you can say like a woman who has. And, uh, so that's me having my baby. That's. That's the last time that you're going to crush on my car because I told Jamie Hunter and uh, Jamie Hunter is my neighbor. Um, that's an ex-Marine and, uh, you know, he's going to put a stop to it basically. So um, we help each other here in the community and um, I tell him what happened to me and uh, he takes care of it, you know. And uh, so you can, you know, just put all these full insurance so you can call me and I'm, no thanks. That's me trashing you the legal way. And, um, and so, you know, I met a tutor, um, to help me with, um, uh, what do you call it? This is in case my phone, I'm not even say that, you know, I don't want to self prophesize, prophesy. Um, but anyway, these Christians are, are nasty bitches from hell and, uh, you just can't trust anybody anymore.
uh, special offer. Come back and we'll waive the free trial. It's like, you can't even sell me a, a car. I have, you know, enough money to buy a car and you can't even sell me a car. What the hell's wrong with you people in California? Just sit around and do nothing all fucking day and night. It's so ridiculous. Anyway, so I, I found, I found this, um, well, this person came to our meeting yesterday and, um, she said, call me, oh, call me to show me around for, um, learn how to use the, uh, I need to learn how to use the public transportation system. And, um, anyway, so, uh, long story short, um, I mean, I was in recovery for, um, abuse, um, but I think I overcame that. So I'm in recovery for, um, Alcohol. I'm not even addicted to alcohol anymore. God just took that addiction away. Thank God. Um, I mean, addiction to tell the truth. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe that's what I'm in recovery for, not to tell the truth. Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. So, yeah, I'm in recovery for, I uh, have to learn not to tell the truth, I guess. Because um, nobody wants to hear the truth. So, um, anyway. This, this is coming true, and I'm going to order another calendar. Calendar is okay, so my time-saving um, aging gracefully plan is working pretty well. You know, yeah, you know, I didn't put any makeup on. I just woke up two hours ago, and I'm uh, pretty fucking frustrated. So I took a picture of my car, posted it on Facebook, and um, I'm not sure why I posted it on Facebook. I mean, who cares, right? It's not like Facebook has, you know... Uh, car insurance free, you know, free car insurance. We're going to call, you know, and we saw your car damaged. So we're going to send a person right up there and fix your car, you know, like they fix bikes or tires. Um, that would be nice, wouldn't it? But yeah, no, that doesn't happen in the United States. Are you kidding? You got to give them $10,000 and then, you know, claim it and then pay for it like millions of years before they fix your car. So I've got five dents, uh, five scars on my car and I have four scars on my body. And um, I guess they're not going away. Uh, they'll be like my five kids um, and my four scars. And so um, I was a middle child and um, still a middle child, I suppose, or middle adult, I guess you want to say it. Um, and so I, I wasn't really liked by the family uh, for many reasons. Basically, me being the middle child, they thought that I never listened. And uh, so anyway, they had their, you know, clans, you know, the two of them parted. And, uh, and that's what they do. Uh, in high school, we call it cliques. And um, so that's that. Um, oh, and then I posted on um, Facebook, I think I said, yeah, Facebook and Instagram. Thing. Um, oh, about the story that um, a friend of mine two years ago, I guess, wanted me to look at and just didn't feel like reading it, but I basically read like two pages of a 50 page book. And, um, you know, sometimes you just don't need to read all the 50 pages. Like I know methotrexate, you know, it's like, it's like giving a, like a pharmacist, you know, a 50 page essay on aspirin. Like I know how aspirin works. Like you don't have to give me a 50 page fucking essay on aspirin, you know? I know how it works. I'm a pharmacist. That's what I study is why we're doctors of pharmacy because <laughs> we, I studied pharmacy for 13 years in college. And, um, if you don't believe me too bad, you know, fuck you. If you don't believe me, I don't give a fucking shit anymore about what you believe and what you don't believe. Go well, fuck off. So the reason that I really wanted to come to Los Angeles, long story short is, um, and, and I tried to come to California in 2002 and, um, and they, my siblings, my family, whoever you want to call it, the enemy, rushed on me to prevent me from coming to California in 2002. So, because I wrote, I found a letter from me writing to California Board of Pharmacy in 2002. And, um, and um, you know, they prevented me for whatever reason. You know, my brother was already in California in 97. So he was trying to get me here. And um, at the time, you know, he lived in the hood in San Francisco. And, and uh, like I live in the hood in L.A. You know, the hood basically is 97% um, Mexican population. And these people are just um, mean. I mean, I don't know what else. So I'm going to keep telling the truth. 
So anyway, yeah, anyway. Oh, the reason that I came, sorry, the reason that I came, oh, the reason that I wanted to come to the United States, oh my God, the reason that I, my dad brought me from, you know, to the United States, that wasn't my decision, I was three years old, had nothing to do with that, you know, um, Oh, the reason I wanted to go to California in 2002 is because all my girlfriends from high school moved to California. And um, one of my friends was a nurse. I was a pharmacist. And uh, and my other friend was, um, she studied, uh, I guess you could call her an ocean, uh, ocean um, animal, ocean animal studier, ocean animal um Oh, bio yeah, sorry. <laughs> I lost the title. Marine biologist. Okay, so, so yeah, I never thought about that. As care, you know? But I guess it's helpful for animals. So, um, anyway, my dad was a nurse at the pharmacy. The other woman uh, at the was a marine biologist. All, all of them moved to California. So, um, I mean, like, that would be like me, like when my friend, um, my Iranian friend, you know, said, look into the story, read the story, you know, read 50 pages of why this guy ended up paraplegic. And uh, I didn't really have to read it because I know why he became paraplegic because he didn't take the medication as prescribed. And, and so she was offended, you know, and um, I'm not sorry for that. You know, you're not sorry for crushing on my car. So she would drive it to Mercedes and... Um, And I never could afford the Mercedes because, um, again, as a high single earner um, pharmacist, 33% of my salary went to the IRS. And so I didn't really have any write-offs. And uh, where was I going with that? I have no idea where I was going with all this. But basically, you know, I don't have to go through your pain to know what to tell you to do. You know, I don't have to go through your fucking pain to tell you what to do. That's my job. You know, it's like telling a therapist, go become a prostitute to learn what, you know, um, human trafficking pain is, you know, like, no, we don't have to do that. You know, we have lab rats to do that. Right. Um, yeah. And so um, anyway, uh, she should have called me sarcastic, not really narcissistic. And um, anyway, so wrong word. Um, long story short, that's the that's the issue here in California. Um, they just never do what you want them to do, and um, I suppose all human beings are are um, fault finders and falters of human behavior, and um, they keep saying uh, iron sharpen. Sometimes it, iron doesn't sharpen iron. You know, what do you mean? Go put iron. Go put an iron on my car and fix it. It's got like five dents, so go fix it. Um, and and anyway, so um, that's my pain. That's my pain. That's my pain. They've been attacking my car for um, 35 years, ever since I got my driver's license. So I got my driver's license in, I think, when I was 16 or 17. So let's do the math. This is how long they've been attacking my car. So how You know, how long do you give up? Like, the impeachment, I mean, shit, they didn't give President Trump, like, Two years before they impeached them, two or three years or four years, whatever. Okay, so I got my driver's license, I think at 17. I'm 55. And 17. 38. So they've been they've been attacking my car for 38 years. 38 years. And um, you know, that's pretty much why I became Christian now. Because um I thought it was because I was Muslim there and kept up attacking my car. Um, but now I turn Christian, they're still attacking my car. So um, they're a bunch of fucks. And um, these fucks won't leave me the fuck alone. And um, so I found a group called Fuckology. 
on uh, Instagram and I joined it for one day and this is what I get crushing on a fucking car, you know, like, damn, you can't get away from these fucking haters. I can't fucking stand them, you know, like stay the fuck away from me, you bastards. Oh, okay. So, um, anyway, one thing that I really didn't like at the hospital when I used to work there is, um, visiting the morgue, you know, visiting dead bodies. And as a pharmacist, you know, I mean, medical students, yeah, they, they go and visit dead bodies and they work on dead bodies. That's how they learn medicine. That's how they learn the body, the anatomy. And um, at least in Detroit, I, you know, I don't know if they do that here. Who cares? But the, mo the point is um, pharmacists don't uh, study the human. Uh, they don't go to the morgue to study bodies. And... Um, so, so the other thing that doctors do in the hospital um, was um, morbidity and mortality rounds. And um, they used to invite me as a pharmacist to come to their morbidity and mortality rounds. And, um, you know, these days, I guess that work would be done by the coroner um, or um, there's another title for it. I don't remember. But anyway, you know, like a med safety officer, that's not exactly how I'm position my life to, to become the coroner of medication uh, deaths, you know? Um, and so um, it just got to be too much. And um, it just got to be too much. It's like crushing on a car every day. Oh, why I left, um, why I left the field is because of that. The burden of, um, the burden of all those deaths just weighed on me so heavily that I just wanted to die. And, um, and so anyway, I don't have to do that anymore. Thank God. <sighs> Cause I'm sure they have teams that review deaths. Anyway, it's called the Sentinel review team. So death is part of life, but doesn't mean that I have to study death every day for the rest of my damn life. Um, so, you know, we used to have arguments back and forth, like, couldn't you kept this patient alive? No, I couldn't have kept him alive. You know, he was bleeding out of his whatever orifice that I couldn't plug, you know, whatever it was. Like somebody pulled out an IV and they couldn't get it in time and it just bled to death, you know. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Um, quick question on my car. I'm going to crush on you, you know.